Insights with Hanley Barnard, an innovative platform with mentors and great ideas. Listen to us on SoundCloud and Spotify. Click the links below. Subscribe to our channel. Hi, welcome to Insights with Hanley Barnard. I'm very honored to have Richard Ardendorf here, who is a phenomenal entrepreneur and also one of our speakers and mentors on the 22nd of March for Ambassadors of the World. Absolutely, looking forward I to it. I always like talking to you. Thank you, Anle. It's good to be here. It's yeah, good to talk to you. you. You've had an interesting career and I've been watching you because one of the things that you've really done, if I think where you started when I first met you and where you are now, is perseverance and rethinking. Hey. A, yeah, for sure. B, I think uh, it's just discovery. Things keep changing. Um, the mm. digital world keeps changing. Social media keeps changing. So you can't keep doing the same thing. Mm. Um, Einstein once said it, so it's on my words. But to keep doing the same thing and expect different results is insanity. That's the definition. Yes. So, you know, you, you need to keep consistently trying new things. And mm. fortunately, I'm, I'm inquisitive. So I like to see new things and try and fail and or not necessarily like to fail. But... Mm. You have to you have to fail to learn and to go through the process so yeah i think perseverance is a, is a good one mm. um but i think eventually as well you know finding what you really enjoy doing that's, that's important the ultimate payoff. that's the ultimate payoff. where you can do something you really enjoy every single day mm. you get to share i mean here we get to sit and share yeah. information with people mm. and it's for them to help themselves so and just to put things awesome. in context you you're a guru of social media that's what you do you do marketing, branding, all that kind of thing. It's been hashtagged as guru, um, mm. but I tend to stay away from, from terms like guru and things. I think, I think the so best way to describe me is I'm just really passionate about social media mm. and the possibilities and the functionality that it gives small business owners, entrepreneurs, people that want to do something for themselves. Mm. It gives you that ability. And yes. my whole mission and, and what I'm passionate about is finding these things and then showing people, hey, have you tried to do it this way? Why isn't this working on social? Potentially this. Mm. And then you start going down the path of, you know, um, sales psychology and marketing and advertising. And this is kind of where it started waking up. Uh, my background is in engineering. So oh, interesting. Were you an engineer? Right. No, I wasn't. What I, were you? I nearly was. I nearly was. Did you um, not finish your I didn't. Degree? I didn't. A quick one. Quick one on that. So I studied engineering. Oh. Incredibly fortunate to have the opportunity. Um, and I had the opportunity at the time to work on a project that saw me for extended periods of time on the road. Yes. Started listening to podcasts, hey, and uh, came across podcasts and, and started initially just with, you know, general life motivational things. Mm. Um, just positivity and just discovering new things. And I slowly but surely came across a podcast about marketing and social and digital. And, mm. and then there was something that they said that intrigued me and it was the remarketing aspect. So what the remarketing right so to Sorry. put that into context you open take a lot you open a website you look at a product and tonight you open facebook you open instagram and there that product is again interesting and that that whole ability for you as a business owner to be able to do that means you're able to remarket to people so now they might have seen your product somewhere or they saw it on a website and now they see it on a different platform so this is what everybody's so scared about they were they're watching Mm. Um, but this is exactly what's available to you. So you're able to put your product perfectly in the right place in front of the right people and in a very, very cost effective way. So when you know how to do this mm. um, and simply by using your cell phone, you know, it, it's so accessible. People just don't know. That's the thing people don't know. And it's funny as you say you're passionate about social media because a lot of people don't like social media, right. especially in South Africa. So, you know, we have load shedding True. for our viewers who are not South African. True. So True. we're sitting with a lot of challenges. challenges. Yes. So now, you know, there's a lot of entrepreneurs happening and people that are we keep on having to reinvent the future. Hmm. We're not secured. In, no. It's a, it's a strange concept for us. It is. But I think yeah. one, one kudos for, for South Africans is our perseverance. We and, know how to be like, okay, and innov a innovation, always, right. you know, there there's is. a problem. We went to run and, and get a battery. Um, it was load shedding this morning. There's again this afternoon. That's chaos. I know. It's chaos. <laughs> it's like you got, you got to go into freeze mode. mode. It's kind of, yeah. <laughs> what now? <laughs> I've just started this product and now I've got to deal with this. And that's, but this is going to be interesting to see how this is going to affect the online side of things. Yes, that's what I want to know. What a lot think? of people see the internet as the ability to mitigate things like load shedding and logistics mm. and the rise of petrol and the rise of retail costs, etc., etc. So online is naturally 
a more cost effective way to go. Yes. But now catch 22, the people that you need to sell to need electricity and data on their phones. That's in order true. To, so where does that go now? Well, I'm asking you what. So what well, it's become incredibly interesting. This is the challenge that we've that we're now presented with. So now we need to start being innovative in that space. So now you need to find different ways of empowering your business. How are you still going to reach people? You know, it's not just say everybody's cell phones are going to be dead. No, so, they're not. They are on every now and then. Right. Yes. But the argument that I would make is mm. during times of load shedding, which device is on? Okay, is so let's talk about that. Is it your that. TV? Yeah. Oh, right, so this, this is where I want to get interesting about it because sure, with load shedding, there's, mm. there's challenges, but you know, the devices that you normally rely on for advertising, aka the TV, mm. um, YouTube and things like that on the TV itself, now is on your mobile phone. But your TV is often load shedding, but your mobile phone, not necessarily. And it yes. just goes again with the power of social media. Mm. It can always be there when you need it. Mm. It's always available. And for your business to advertise, you need to take advantage of that. So, so that's true. If we kind of divide the product with the service industry. So if I'm an entrepreneur in South Africa and I've got a product, tell me a little bit because people get very scared. They, I think a lot of people are scared of the internet. They kind of go, oh, where do I take it from there? So let's just take a product, right? Let's sure. take this cup. Sure. I've got this cup and I want to put it, I want to sell it. What do you, do you look at the audience you want to sell it to? Obviously, can you give us a few, some so values here's, regarding that? Here's, here's a good way to look at it. And it's a great question because in 2010, that question would have been answered in a different way. We're going to have to gonna, reshoot this um, podcast in a year, right? Because it's probably going to change <laughs> again. Change. <laughs> but, and, and it's, it's, an impo it's important to understand that because Social media isn't just social media, it's social media. There's, it, it gets so deep. You can go into psychology and into the data. And, and, and But the point at the end of the day is how mm. do you take a product mm. and take it to market? Yes. So in 2010, it was a case of just shooting many, many pictures of the thing, putting it out 10 times a mm. day, and you would see results without spending a lot of money. Now we're seeing, obviously, with more people adopting social media and more people becoming um, social media savvy and online and spending more time online, mm. a lot of buying decisions start going into this market, but now it's starts yeah. becoming competitive. So now you've also got all your competitors taking hundreds of photos and sending that all day. So now you need to start seeing, well, how can you make your product stand out? And so oh. this is where it gets interesting, where a business that focuses on taking their product and speaking to the audience and doing the time yes. and the energy to understand who they're talking to That's is important. going to see a lot better results based on you're going to create better content. So the person that you're trying to see or trying to reach will resonate and actually stop and look at the post and take in what you're saying, mm. number one, and you're speaking straight to them. So mm. instead of just taking the shotgun approach and creating content for everybody, start creating specific content. And this is where we're going. So we're going mm. into a world where people are getting incredibly creative. I mean, look at TikTok. People are shooting incredible, incredible videos at home. And a lot of people go, oh, TikTok. But TikTok's become a it's, very powerful it's a powerhouse. It's an, and it's platform. a brand powerhouse because you've got all these people so active and the way TikTok is built, it's different to Facebook and Instagram and pretty much all the other social platforms in the way that it delivers content. Would you say that a product should most certainly be on again, TikTok? Again, oh, this, is, this, is, this is a, a conversation that there's, there's no cookie cutter approach. It's like, okay, mm. you're, a, you're a coffee cup company, do X, Y, and Z. You're a coffee cup company selling in this region and producing this type of coffee, mm. which really impacts that type of market. And they love to see videos like this. So are you really taking your audience and really creating a profile? Absolutely. I think that would work going specifically the age group, the um, age which, which geographical the area, what, so, so you, a Is, day in the life of kind of, of well, you, you, you've still got the basic um marketing research that you do to create yes. personas and things like that but the, the mm. important aspect is the way that everything and especially buying decisions are becoming creative driven influencer driven community driven in mm. other words if i'm seeing all my friends or my favorite influencers or my favorite content producers use your product in creative ways and they make cool videos and i normally follow them mm. and now i'm being exposed to your product that that's a different that's a different conversation and that's where the future is headed because now we're getting content made for specific purposes in creative ways. And it's not salesy. It's not like I'm standing there saying, buy my coffee cup same. because it holds coffee twice as long. Yeah, and twice as long. Like those twice advert, as long. Who holds coffee twice, twice as long? For, for twice as long in time, perhaps. <laughs> twice as long <laughs> in one. time. But um, it, that's, that's the whole thing is, mm. is more collaboration, more getting brands out there and, you know, using it in use cases. If this was, for example, 
had someone known that creates coffee cups that we're going to be creating this podcast, mm. they should have sponsored a, a coffee cup. They should have. have Where's our coffee? Right. So it's time to relax. Always. But this is the future. Mm. This, this is, is where future. it's going. It's, it's Jackie was saying we should have coffee cups. Today. Can you bring some coffee? Ab- cups absolutely. Also? With a QR code on it. I think, <laughs> I think it's important the word collaboration mm. because. Um, Social, you know, so you're sitting, and I think the problem is, is that if you're an entrepreneur and you want to start your company, you're kind of sitting. Collaboration and social media is it's key. It's is absolutely key. key. So I've built, and we're busy transitioning my whole business, um, the agency side, mm. to to be set up in that way. So instead of having a photographer that's really good at taking photos we rather collaborate and have a network of content creators, specific influencers that are really good at creating videos for coffee cups. Right. So that when we get a client that has a coffee cup to sell, mm. we can pair them with the perfect person that knows how to shoot content for that product. Exactly. And also knows how to shoot for a specific audience that knows what they want to see. So mm. we're seeing where in the old, old Dura days, in the, in the beginning of social media, you had a lot of agencies managing production and creating videos. And it is still like that. Mm. But the transition and the change is coming into having individuals create. So now I agree with you. Right. So you yeah. rather have a team of, mm. say, five or six influencers and content creators creating content for this brand mm. instead of having one production company that goes to five locations and shoots predetermined videos to the same style. And, yes. And, Do you think people are spreading themselves too thin instead of using a specific expertise? I mean, in South Africa, we or in the world at the moment, we need to kind of know a broad scope of we do. I think, I think one thing, and, and I'm, I'm guilty of it as well, is underestimating the potential, number one, mm. and how ahead South Africa actually is, and how active South Africa actually is on social media. We've got incredible content creators that, that come from South Africa. We've got, I mean, I'm pretty sure I can say his name, but, but Dan Mace. Yes. Um, he's now partnering with Mr. Beast, and Mr. Beast right. is one of the biggest YouTube um, success stories of mm. all time. I mean, mm. he's got millions of subscribers mm. so you know he's south african and he's just one example um, of someone that's really stood out but there's tons and tons of really great outdoor photographers yes. outdoor videographers such a talented you know? bunch yeah. so why do you use the question starts becoming why do you use a call it a jack of all trades photographer and no no disrespect to the photography mm. but what i'm saying is when we create advertisements and content and, and we're trying to to build a brand mm. on social media and get community around it we're not necessarily pushing sales the whole time, but we're pushing content that makes you relate with the brand. Push, push content. I must agree with you. I spoke to a photographer the other day. I don't know if JP agrees with yeah, shooting, filming us. But if you're a photographer and you just shoot moms and babies, right? Um, it's far more successful often than shooting, or you're a wedding photographer, for instance, sure. or you're a real estate photographer. That, that kind of target is important. Instead it of is. saying, I'm a general it is. I think it's. Photographer, do you think? Look, if you, I'm not going to say that is the way it should be. If you have got those skills and you're able to maintain a presence to tell people that you're mm. incredibly good at moms and babies and weddings and and and, by all means. But the the landscape of social media and content in mm. general is moving towards. I'm a brilliant bird photographer. Mm. I'm, 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 I'm filming I can take, right, birds. I, I yes. can take pictures of of people yeah. but my social media and, and my business is built around creating content for birds and nature lovers so if i'm a company that wants to get some shots about birds mm. i can use a general photographer or i can use a person that's really good at shooting birds mm. makes my content better absolutely and it's not a thing of cost because you're getting specific that's what content, I wanted to ask. so it still balances mm. but now you've got someone that's a real expert in that field specifically knows what color leaves work with what bird at what time yes. of the day. Da, 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 da. they're really really good at that because they've had the time to hone in those skills so use them mm. but the I, I mean you're quite resilient and I you're always you. thinking ahead you're always thinking creatively you always go and i've interviewed you on radio before and you have this Sure, let's get social. It's yeah. always great chatting to you on it. Listen but you, to it. <laughs> yes, listen to it. But the thing is, you you thought of that. You think mm. how you know that's a radio audience and this is a podcast audience, and so you're always having to reinvent the oh, wheel. Don't you get tired? Or is that your? I find it. And I have to do it. I have to constantly think. Oh, oh reinvent this. <laughs> it intrigues me. It intrigues me. Why? Nice why does work. this video do better than that one? Why did that photo do better? And then it's it, it's intriguing because it's not just one answer. No. Is it a psychology thing? Was it a time of day thing? Was it a data thing? Was it an algorithm thing? Was it a Facebook thing? Was mm. it a 
hashtag thing? Was it a, you know, is it, was it just a trend? You know, why does things go viral? It's things like that, it really, really intrigues me. I like that, that you're an investigator. Yes. But seeing, I think that's what it takes, is to investigate and if you can, what I believe, works for this. I believe if you can understand what creates those moments and like what makes content stand out, mm. and you can hone in that skill and you can create content based on that, then you're always going to be ahead of the curve. Mm. You're always going to know what is the next trend, what is the next best thing, what is you know what do people want, and then where is the industry going? Mm. I again think that the industry will move in a, in a direction of having specific content producers and specific people for very specific tasks, mm. especially into the future. Mm. Um, and you, you'll see less of the generalist, gen, less of the guy that can do yes. everything. Yes. And I'm looking for someone that is able to print red pens on a black background. I mean, you're part of Business Connect Halderberg, and that's, I think, what we're doing in Business Connect in general, is where people are coming together and we're using each other's skills. And I think that's important, important, is that there is a community. But sometimes I see somebody's putting something on Facebook, they're selling candles now or something like that. But there is steps. You can be more aggressive with your marketing, I think, in, in certain aspects. Just take it a bit further. Mm. But I think it's overwhelming for people. It is. I have had the realization okay. through the industry because I think I think I was misled in, by my own demise mm. um, to think that social media, because it's so accessible, you make the assumption that but this is so easy. Like, why do mm. people do it? And then as soon as you make that assumption, you start thinking, well, because I know it, you should know it, it's just general knowledge that's yes. on my phone every day kind of thing. But the more I do this, and that's why Let's Get Social exists, is to take what I know and what I see and what I hear and mm. share that so that other people can get the opinion. It might just be the key that you need, and that's why it exists. That's why Let's Get Social exists yeah. in yes. the first place. But if people can just understand just the basics, just how to get started, and I agree with you. Um, it's frustrating to see mm. people posting all day long in certain ways and I'm like, oh, this is, and I leave a comment and I'm like, try this, try that, try, try this, that, try, try that. that. Mm. But I don't know if it's a, it's a thing of people have that automatic belief of this is really difficult to do Maybe. because you open TikTok or you open Instagram or you open Facebook and you see videos and you think, wow, I'm never going to create a video like that. But remember that guy's first video looked like it, it was shot look on like a, that. No, it was like blocky and shot on a 33, 10, six yes. years ago. But you don't see that journey, you see what he has created mm, now. Mm. And it's important to to know that, understand that, and to say, right, just start. I think that's important is just start. And if you carry on, you'll see the real you, you, you will. You will. Eventually the idea you will. is if you can continuously uh, educate yourself. And mm. my favorite university is the University of Google. Their yearly subscription is free, so you can just go that's to any class. Great. Yeah, it's university. called the search bar. Yeah. Yeah, you just type you just in, I'm looking for like this that. answer, right? And then it gives it to you. So educate yourself. The information is yes. out there. Follow content creators that talk about specific things. If it's advertising and um, how to take your business mm. online and entrepreneurship in that sphere, that's that's what I do. So I spend time talking to entrepreneurs, talking to celebrities, mm. getting their opinions and their feedback, and then I share that. So if that is vital to you and it's going to help you in your business, then follow me and follow people like me mm. so you can consistently educate yourself around what's changing, what's new, how do I do this, mm. how do I do that. You don't necessarily have to pay for this. I like the fact that you say education because I think you 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 constantly relearn. You, you yeah, constantly absolutely. have to surround yourself with intelligent people. You, you, you have to listen to people and, and restructure what you're doing. And I think... A lot of people are in a situation where they're going, you know, in Afrikaans is a nice way of saying, in your mood, you know, mm. now what am I going to do? Now what? It means I'm the pavement, what now? <laughs> you know, so, so it's, 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 it's that getting up, I think, that exhausts people. I think so. And, mm. the, and this, is, this is slightly out of my area of speci speciality. speciality. Mm. But I think as well, people are very, um, they don't trust themselves. Mm. People are scared to take that step. And I see it, and a perfect example is, I've seen a person ask for help on, on social media saying, looking for someone to help me do this. Mm. And I'll reply and I'll say, I'll do this for absolutely free. You often give your, your yeah, services. Come, sit, come sit with me for an hour. Let me hear what, you, what you're saying because you're going to go sit with an agency that's going to sell you something and it's not going to give yes. you the results. Or it might, but over long term, and there's better ways of doing things. And FYI, ma'am, sir, you've got a cell phone in your pocket. That's how you phoned me. So, you know, let me teach you to use that thing. And get yourself up to a place where you can then start. Well, you can others. call me. <laughs> right. You know what I mean. But so, don't waste your money because yes. there's, 
unfortunately there is agencies out there that won't have that best interest at heart mm. but it's a thing of reallocating money slightly differently showing you slightly different ways of doing things and just a couple of things to make it easier so you can get started so how do you manage your your marketing budget in terms of i would say smaller companies that wants to launch something so there's again what do you think is most important it's a great question mm. you need to look at what is available and what is what does that company do certain things in the industry are not going to work for certain types of businesses um, and when i say that you know let's say using an influencer to promote something in the service industry that's not really palatable um, yes you know, service industries like, like let's yeah, take something, something silly like like a plumber using mm -hmm. an influencer for a plumbing campaign if you can unless you can find a really creative way and i'm sure there's a way you can do it and i'd <laughs> love to explore it, but <laughs> it, it wouldn't be the first thing that i would think of doing no. i would rather go to something like paid advertising because right. you're able to generate leads you're able to create funnels and emails and databases so that is a solution mm. for that kind of business and that is why i say there isn't a cookie cutter approach to you know post this have this connect this and do that mm. and you'll get that mm. it, it doesn't work that way or it could potentially, but you can end up wasting a lot of money on the way. So rather look at, you know, what, what can the company do in-house? What capabilities are there? What do they have? What don't they have? What so means in-house is what they have at their disposal. So I Correct. have a phone. Correct. So, so I'm going to take the phone. I'm going to take some photos. I'm going to Google where to hashtag them. And I'm going to put them on a platform. Right. Or you could, right. instead of spending half an hour to an hour doing that, you could pay an agency to do just that for you. Mm. And those type of results that you will get are long-term results. They, long -term. they will take time to mm. get. Whereas the way we look at it is we say, all right, well, you've got this receptionist available mm. and you potentially say that you enjoy creating videos. Mm. Is that something that you're looking at doing in-house or mm. should we get someone to do that for you? That's how we look at it. So we look at the overall budget and go, well, how can we save money? Well, first of all, the receptionist can manage answering Facebook messages. We can train her to do just that. Mm. And she can do posts and she can do this and that, that a normal agency would charge mm. you for. And the complicated things, call it so, the paid advertising and the more in-depth kind of things that needs a little bit of speciality, we manage that. So you would take your budget then and rather spend it on that? I would rather reallocate. So instead right. of saying, you know, yeah, we'll do 10 posts to your page a month, uh, for X amount of money that's going to bring you no results. Exactly. Instead of doing that, here's your receptionist. Let's train her for an hour to do that. Absolutely. And then let's focus on things that will bring results. And as you go, right. you innovate and you change. And so we work at, um, obviously, in strategies and we try and plan ahead of time. But it's social media. Today it works. In a week from now, mm. it doesn't. So you need to be a, have that ability to, to change and consistently adapt. Yes, we do have that ability. We all do. It's not difficult to take a photo. It really isn't. <laughs> we see my photos. Like, but, <laughs> but, but even yes, those, no, even it's still though, better than nothing. No, it is. Absolutely. It's still better than nothing. So if your business is in a position to, so if your mm. business is in a position to get third parties on board to take photos and you know to create content for you, by all means. But know that that's not necessarily the only way to grow It's not the business. end result. It's no. not really what you want to achieve. And it's it's getting those goals in place. And it's not just about the post. There's, mm. you know, social media is paid advertising and collaborations and influencer marketing and mm. organic marketing. And there's, there's so many different ways that each and every business just needs to know what resources do they have? Mm. What do they need to do on social media for their industry to see results? Mm. And how can you then execute that as a plan? All right. That's and that's strategy. That is what comes into play. I think that is important to, mm. to note because I think the 90% of the approaches that I see mm. is the cookie cutter approach. Like, right, just put a couple of posts out there, write some text on it. But, you know, even down to the text, there's a, there's a certain way that you can speak. You know, there's certain words that you mm. can use and, you know, the problem and solution and all these little frameworks mm. and things like that. If you can just start using those basics, you don't have to have these super creative videos from the, from the no, get-go. No, you don't. I promise you with all hundred followers on your yes. page, it's not going to make a difference. Just no. get started. And just to conclude, you, um, I would say, is... You're, you're a mentor in many ways, and that's why I'm excited that you're speaking at the Ambassador Thank you for the Seminar, which is really great. But you're also a leader. You kind of bring people together and collaborate with them. What is, what is leadership to you now? Because I think that people are, because of the crisis, I think, in the world economic crisis and the load shedding crisis and all of that, how important is it for people to bring people together? 
in terms I, of that with confidence. This is a great topic. Should we do another podcast? <laughs> you should. You've got a few minutes to the, say, kind of give me some advice, maybe. Let's, let's That's a whole it. podcast, this one. I see um, the future, and, and I'm, I'm not just talking online specifically, but I see the hum, humanity, call it, moving forward in a way where community is going to become more and more important. It's important. Um, without digressing too much, we're seeing different technologies now, artificial intelligence and blockchain technology, mm. and all these different, and at their core, the purpose is to take back the power, is to take back to take back control and to, yes. to rather, you know, you're a specialist. And that's why I said earlier, mm. you know, it's, it's, we're moving into a phase where people become specialists. At specialists things. in their field. So now mm. take what I've just said and see that in the broader landscape. Absolutely. That is where the future, I believe, is going. Chat, chat GPT and, and artificial intelligence mm. and all these different technologies and the metaverse and blockchain. I see those applications on social media. Mm. Um, and so while I, while I, um, I, I'm trying to be a leader in, in certain fields. What I'm actually trying to do is just to educate people, to help them help themselves. Education is important. And I also think that we are not in a situation where we can rely on anybody because things are so all over the show, especially now. Absolutely. With, with the stuff that's happening in, in specifically South Africa, for those of you who aren't South African, it's quite a challenge at the yes. moment, I think, for entrepreneurs, for the jobs that's non-existent. And so much so it's important for collaboration to occur. Absolutely. And with your finger at your Absolutely. and you've got to get it. No, sit down. No, it's the time. I think it's important. I think that, that perseverance, that's, I mean, that's one of the qualities of an entrepreneur. Mm. Um, and, it, and I believe it's something you can learn. Mm. Yes. So, you know, just what keep pushing, but innovate. innovate. In innovative. Keep, look, creativity. keep looking. Creativity. Keep looking. That's fantastic. Just tell us about your topic a bit. You're speaking about. And wow, so, <laughs> the title, can I share the title? Yes, I'm allowed to share do. the title. Do. The title is The Essential 30 Seconds to Business Success. That's amazing. And we are pretty much going to go in depth about what we've just spoken about today, mm. where you don't need to rely on other people to push the right. post button. It takes you 30 seconds to take a photo mm. and get your business started online. Yes. And from that, we'll start developing into all of what social media offers your business mm. and what opportunities they offer you to grow. I think that's very insightful. I look forward because we will be recording that. So I look Phenomenal. forward to your talk on so. the 22nd. And uh, Richard Ardendorf, wishing you the best of blessings for your future, for your Thank collaboration you with other creative minds Appreciate and for it. your leadership abilities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And as always, um, at Social Richard is my handles on pretty much all the social platforms, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, you Instagram. We're all there. Google it. <laughs> but reach out and um, yeah, let's collaborate. Let's yes, chat. Collaborate. Let's collaborate. Yeah. Brilliant. Love it. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. And that was Insights with Honey Barnard with the wonderful Richard Ardendorf. So we'll be chatting to you soon and connecting mentors and connecting people that are really adding value to your business and to your life. Hope to see you soon. Thank you.